the headlines receive their weekly hammering from Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to the program that treats everyone like royalty, unless of course they're members of the royal family. In the news this week, there are fears that Virgin Radio is costing Richard Branson so much that he's been forced to scale down Virgin Airlines. <laughs> Sport, and after Stephen Hendry wins the World Snooker Championship at the Crucible, the Irish squad take the team event by storm. And in the Midlands, there's an unseemly brawl at the Duncan Goodhue Appreciation Society. <laughs> well, uh, many people have attempted to get on this show by sleeping with one of the team captains. Tonight, we have someone who's not just slept with one, but even went as far as marrying him. The actress who's already being described as Mrs. Merton, Caroline Quentin. <laughs> I don't mind you saying all that, but why did I have to sleep with you as well? <laughs> it's, uh, it's just in the contract. I <laughs> so, but thank you anyway. All right. um, and on Mr. Quentin's side, uh, someone who'd like to make it clear that he hasn't slept with anyone he shouldn't have, which is rather strange because he is in fact a member of a royal family. Uh, please welcome Prince Baz of the Arifi tribe in Nigeria <laughs> and Daily Mail journalist to boot Baz Bamig Boy. And so we shift uneasily into round one. Two bits of shoddy camera work per team. What story are they attempting to convey? Ian and Caroline, where and how much? Mm -hmm. uh, group four's annual barbecue. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's Windsor Castle burning. That's Buckingham Palace. Not burning, yet. Not burning. But you, you're going to be able to go in there. Oh, that's, that's a loo they're going to the stores. You can pay ten pence and watch the Queen having a pee <laughs> when you go in. Windsor Castle burnt. Mm. And um, then the public were meant to pay for it. And then the public said, we're not going to pay for it. So the Queen said, fair enough, I'll set up a fund. Which, of course, no one gave any money to. Because they didn't want to pay for it. But she never gives up. Um, <laughs> so now she's come up with a brilliant wheeze that she'll open Buckingham Palace. And the public can pay eight pounds to see the things that they've already paid for. <laughs> with their taxes. So, um, on your right, the staircase where Diana fell down. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is the, uh, the news that Buckingham Palace is to be open to the public at £8 a time. There'll be special reductions for the unemployed, so Prince Edward will get in cheap. <laughs> <laughs> every, um, every visitor will have access to all but the royal family's most private rooms. That's unless he's Michael Fagan or a Texan. <laughs> Uh, it's also been announced that the public will now be charged admission to Windsor Castle. So when it was in perfect condition, it was free. Now it's burnt out shell. It costs three quid. So, <laughs> fair enough. Paul and Baz, uh, who and why? Oh. oh, this is a new Interflora Dial a Pratt service. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is a traffic jam. Ah, someone I know. That's oh, Richard Branson. <laughs> Johnny Green Jones. That's, that's what happens if you eat all your spinach. This is, <laughs> this, this is something to do with. Um, the, the government's uh, attempt to try and sp stop May Day, isn't it? Mm. Which uh, they want to bring in. The government wants to bring in Trafalgar Day in October. That, of course, will upset um, will upset our European partners, won't it? What? Because the they got stuffed. <laughs> 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 Have you ever worked Something for the like diplomatic that, yes. service? <laughs> I think you could be right. Uh, it's the argument about whether or not to keep the May Day bank holiday. Uh, those in favour say it's crucial because it's the day when Morris dancing traditionally takes place. Those against say it should be abolished for exactly the same reason. <laughs> uh, the protest marchers, many of them Morris dancers, descending on the, descended on the Houses of Parliament. Uh, historically, Morris dancers have apparently been regarded as fertility symbols. Um, presumably there's nothing more fertile than someone who hasn't had it for weeks because he's wearing a top hat and breeches. <laughs> Uh, among the revellers were Mad Jack's dancers, uh, the Hampshire Garland, 
and the so-called loose women of Maidstone. <laughs> Once they turned up, there was no trouble getting the MP's attention. <laughs> Ian and Caroline, who and how on earth? <clears throat> grapefruit. Well mm -hmm. spotted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. Another mm. grapefruit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the plane he never got on. Yeah, that's his getaway vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Too fast for the serious fraud office. Right. <laughs> Since, um... <laughs> and isn't this, um, this is the man from Del Monte who say no? Mm. <laughs> Uh, as Nadir. No, I'm not going to face trial. Absolutely not. I'm yes. getting on a plane. Well, didn't they have a tip off that he was going to leave the country on Sunday? Sunday, yes, he left on Tuesday. Yeah, completely fooled them. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that he was a major donor to the Conservative Party. Doesn't that make you feel cheery? <laughs> and isn't there a funny suggestion that he was helped on his way? Well, they mm. let him go. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know what the Daily Mail will think of that sort of reasoning. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's Azil Nadir, who's uh, flown to northern Cyprus, jumping his three and a half million pound bail, uh, which he was originally granted on condition that he stay in Belgravia. I wouldn't mind being on bail if I had to stay in Belgravia. <laughs> uh, it turns out that the DPP, the Lord Chancellor, and the head of the Serious Fraud Squad are also in Cyprus for a conference on fraud. Well, if they need a guest speaker. <laughs> The first company he bought was a cash-and-carry business. How prophetic that turned out to be. <laughs> I call him Baz. We want information. Oh, the new rubber pickaxe. <laughs> He's nicked the wallpaper. <laughs> oh, this is that, um, that East German guy, Marcus Wolf. Oh, yes. Who's uh, a bit upset. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. Is that him? Yeah, it's him, yeah. Isn't that him? <laughs> what's he... And uh, what does Marcus do, Paul? I mean, what does he do? <laughs> he used to work for the East German Secret Service, and there was a suspicion that John Le Carre used him as one of the characters in The Spy Who Came In From The Coal, but John Le Carre has denied that it was, in fact, this man, because he named the character Wolf after his lawnmower. What rubbish! Hand the question <laughs> over! <laughs> Damn, yes. Um, it would appear to be right. Yes. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, it was just a fluke. <laughs> uh, yes, it is former East German spymaster Marcus Wolf, uh, now on trial in the West for basically doing his job too well. Uh, not a problem that would ever arise at MI5. <laughs> uh, one of Wolf's ploys were to uh, seduce unsuspecting secretaries with a team of so called Romeo agents. Must have been a bit of a <laughs> giveaway having them wandering around in doublet and hose declaring their love to women on balconies. <laughs> As, uh, I thought he gave them sort of presents of soap or something, sort of some soap that's being currently advertised. Well, the Merton advertising <laughs> Life Boy. Yes. <laughs> not Life Boy, it's, it's Cooper's soap. Mm. <laughs> the soap you can trust. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave it with 50 quid on the mantelpiece. <laughs> and you'll come back and it'll still be there. <laughs> Unlike Azil Nadir soap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 50 mm. quid gone. <laughs> which uh, chronic endeavours drag us screaming to the end of this formative stage and look at the crimson digits reveal that uh, joyously both Ian and Mrs Merton and Paul and Prince Baz have the requisite four. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to briefly test the temperature of what's come to be known as our caption competition. Two unsightly eyesores for you to fix in your mind. Ian and Caroline, this is yours. <laughs> <laughs> is this a piece? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll look forward to that one. Um, That's the job. Paul and Baz, you can have this one. <laughs> oh, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> And so we barge unceremoniously into our headlines round, a round in which there are four headlines, hence the name. Uh, Paul, all the Vice Girls love an abseiler. This is the, um, the, the uh, ladies of the night in Tiger Bay who are going on a sort of, uh, what would you call it, sort of, uh, kind of adventure holiday, aren't they? You know? Sort of like the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, isn't it, or something? Oh, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> 
Allegedly. <laughs> He's been married a long time. He can do what he likes. <laughs> um, they've sort of been sent on this holiday, haven't they? The, yeah. The council has sent them or something. That's right. Yes. Why? To make them happy or something. Right? Yes, I'm sure. Well, the local councillors don't like going with miserable tarts. Is that a problem? <laughs> <laughs> It is the loose women of Cardiff this time uh, who are exchanging their stockings and stilettos for stout walking shoes, much as Frank Boff does every morning. <laughs> as, um, as part of a charity scheme to introduce them to new experiences, the prostitutes are to be taken to the Brecon Beacons where they will be lashed together with rope for rock climbing and pulling on rubber wetsuits for canoeing. Sounds like a normal day but without the retired judge. <laughs> Uh, one of them said, we said no to abseiling because we thought it meant being pulled in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, think they're confusing it with shagging a sailor, but there we are. <laughs> uh, participating prostitutes have been told to bring three pounds and a lunchbox. Let's hope none of them misunderstand that one. <laughs> A, uh, a South Cardiff police sergeant said with the amount of money these girls charge, they could afford their own day out. I wonder how he knows how much they charge. Uh, Baz, a heartwarming story of a dog and his bank account for you. Dog gets a £60 million lead. Is this the one about um, an Alsatian um, who was left £60 million by his owner? But I think there was a proviso, wasn't there, something about... Um, He'd have to buy a football team, sort of win a lot United or something like that. <laughs> yes, it sounds extraordinary, but it's absolutely true. Uh, it's Gunter the Third is his name. Gunter? Yes. To you? Uh, no, to everyone, oh, I, I think. <laughs> uh, an Alsatian who's been left £60 million by his owner, Countess Carlotta Liebenstein. Uh, one of the conditions of her will, naturally enough, is that the money is spent on buying a football club for him. It'll be the uh, first time a soccer club's been owned by a large, ferocious animal since Robert Maxwell sold Derby. <laughs> Family lawyer Maurizio Meehan said, unfortunately, the dog isn't even capable of standing up. Well, perhaps he should take over at Nottingham Forest. <laughs> uh, Caroline, some healthy smut for you. EC source. Isn't this uh, some sort of e EC regulation that they're going to ban um, smutty postcards? You know, the sort of big-bosomed ladies and policemen with their trousers around their ankles and thin vicars with their... Bums showing. You're going to say no, aren't you? I've <laughs> said all that. Um, I'm not vicars so with their bums showing. Vicar. I beg your pardon. I'm not seen a postcard with thin vicar with a bum showing. <laughs> you want to get out more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the one. <laughs> 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 try to be nice, we try to be kind. <laughs> you wait. Yeah, I will wait, no. <laughs> hey, you right. bloody have to after this game. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, shall we let them sit together? I was going to recommend a good lawyer. <laughs> I bet you know a few. No, you don't, actually. Not do you? one. <laughs> I feel as if I'm in the middle of a situation comedy here. Um, it's only a question of time, Angus. Well, we had the <laughs> <pick up. laughs> um, Caroline, you were talking about Saucy's postcards, I seem to remember. She was talking about thin vicars with their bums, Angus. <laughs> that's it, that's all I've got to say on the oh, subject. Right. Oh, well, that's in that case... Is I'll it right? You. Yes, it is. Okay. It's the news that EC officials have uh, issued a directive mm. proposing a ban on Saucy seaside postcards. Uh, this could mean an end to such priceless gems as how would you like to try a length underwater? <laughs> Move your balls, I can't get you all in. <laughs> and have a suck before it goes soft. <laughs> and of course, uh, the amusing thing is, of course, that he could almost have been talking about his penis in that last one. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, Bernard Manning is reported as saying these EC busybodies should remember that laughter makes the world a better place. Especially all those jokes about chinks and packies, Bernard. Uh, Blackpool sell a million of these cards every year, which could give the royal family a few ideas for their souvenir shop. <laughs> Just uh, print up a few thousand old holiday snaps of Fergie. No silly, I said toe job. <laughs> And, uh, and finally, Ooh. finally in this round, Ian, a uh, culinary query for you. Is the porridge to your satisfaction? Yeah, it's a 
survey or something. A prison questionnaire that's been sent round. Um, questionnaire. A questionnaire. <laughs> interesting, actually. Do you not like questionnaire? <laughs> it's sort of EC regulation. It has to be <laughs> questionnaire <laughs> now. Yes. A lot of our prisons are very worried about um, um, their prisoners. I mean, they're in their cells for a start. It's a bit of a shock. Um, and they're trying to check that they're having a nice time. And they're sending around things saying, do you like the food? Is everything all right for you? Um, would you like to be out at all? <laughs> exactly right. It is... I don't uh, sound like a backbench Tory MP, but uh, the buggers should starve! <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's uncanny. 20 years from now... Mm. <laughs> It's, uh, it's the prison version of the Citizens' Charter, a hotel-style questionnaire um, <laughs> sent to prisoners all over the country uh, <laughs> asking how their conditions can be improved. Uh, most popular requests so far have been for lower walls, fewer bars and the right to receive very long, thin cakes from home. <laughs> Part of the questionnaire uh, dealt with the transport to prison by Group 4. 10% said it was a comfortable trip, 10% said it was uncomfortable, and the other 80% were unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> All of which uh, inside information brings us uh, thrusting to the midway point of our show and the half-time score. Uh, well, neither side seems even faintly capable of establishing a lead, as both Ian and Mrs Merton and Paul and Prince Baz have an equitable four. <laughs> <laughs> Say four then on the scores. <laughs> yeah, I meant eight, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and so we uh, proudly march backwards into our odd one out round for masters of their craft. Which one is the Jilly Cooper? Oh. <laughs> what have you seen, Riders? Yes. Oh, sorry. Four, four peas in a pod for you. Sinead O'Connor. Pinhead from Hellraiser. Ah. Oh. Prince Albert and the headmaster of Grange Comprehensive in Bournemouth. <laughs> He's rather camera shy, but yeah. <laughs> yes. well, Prince Prince Albert's the only one who's been impaled on a white top hat. <laughs> <laughs> but what is... I, I don't know. How can you tell? Because you can't see the fourth man. They might all be bald, apart from the headmaster from Grange Comprehensive School, Bournemouth. No, he's bald too. Well, he's um, obviously very busy inside, marking eight million assessments before tomorrow. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Maybe he's warned that all the other three are a bad influence on children. No, that can't be right. Um, no, Prince can't. Albert hasn't had much influence since 1864. <laughs> no, it's Only one of them's in blue. Uh, it's an excellent answer, Ian, but you don't get any points for spotting a colour on this <laughs> very... Uh, I'll tell you, the answer is that all of them have had some part of their anatomy pierced. Uh, except Mr. Cook, the headmaster of Grange <laughs> Comprehensive, <laughs> who, um, who said, I, I refuse to allow boys with their ears pierced through the school gates. <laughs> Odd way to have your ears pierced. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> I did say that Prince Albert had been impaled with a top hat. Doesn't that count as part of the body being pierced? Um, no. No. What did he have pierced? Um, I was just about to tell you, interestingly enough. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Prince Albert uh, gave his name to a peculiar form of body piercing apparently practised by a number of Victorian men in which the male member is held down by a metal ring to prevent uh, visible ooh. movement in tight clothing. <laughs> Linford Christie, <laughs> please note. Visible movement in tight clothing? Mm. Be a hell of a spring at the end of the day, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <Very> <laughs> We'll draw a hasty veil over this one. You should, you should say. I've been worried a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> Baz, uh, a bevy of beauties for you. Bridget Bardot, oh. Jane Seymour, Monica Seles, and the <laughs> late King Tutankhamun. <laughs> No wonder he died if he had the thing over his head. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, they're all in this week's Hello. Is, is it like oh, the, the curse of Hello? <laughs> it's something to do with the curse of Hello. Well, well, well Monica, Sellers, Monica, Sellers had a, <laughs> Monica Sellers had a spread in Hello recently. And then really? Some, I missed some... that one. <laughs> <laughs> Was it an overhead log? <laughs> <laughs> um, Bridget, I think she's been in Hello as well. 
happened. Something nasty has happened to Martha have been in Hello magazine. That's the curse of Hello magazine. I can't think what's nasty has happened to Jane Seymour, though. It's us who suffers, though, isn't it, with Jane Seymour? Didn't she, get, she got divorced or something or separated after she said, I have a happy marriage that will last forever. She always yes. does. She's done about a fault do now, isn't she? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> And, oh. and so that's the curse of Alone, that's the curse of Tooting Carmoon, so he's the odd one out. It's perfect answer for two points. Well done. It is uh, that all except Tooting Carmen are uh, victims of the celebrated curse of Hello magazine. Tooting Carmen had his own curse, which was carved on the wall of the tomb. Uh, experts later translated the hieroglyphics, which read, King Tooting Carmoon is seen here relaxing with his lovely wife in our exclusive colour spread. <laughs> Uh, further pictures in tombs 18 to 27. <laughs> Caroline, four sinister figures for you. Margaret Thatcher. Mm. Ross Perot. Mm. Imogen Stubbs. Mm -hmm. And the lovely Roy Disney, head of the Disney Corporation. Mm. I think this is a beard question. <laughs> no, uh, just wait. <laughs> I know that um, Imogen Stubbs is married to Trevor Nunn. Well done. This director. You probably know that, don't you, Bess? Yes, I do. And, um... <laughs> he's professionally He's got a very strange you know beard. Mm. But I also know that Margaret Thatcher wouldn't have anybody with a beard in her cabinet. Dennis hasn't got a beard, either. Seems he? fair, doesn't it? No, he wasn't in the cabinet. You stick to showbiz, Bess. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, um, and Ross wouldn't have anybody working for him who had a beard. And, uh, what's his name? Fanny at the bottom. Um, Disney. Mm. You're Roy. Not, Roy, Roy Disney. You're not allowed to have uh, a beard if you work for, for Disneyland. In fact, you can't have anything. You can't have B.O. Or, or you've got to have very white teeth. You've got to be a perfect human being to work for Disneyland. Mm. Is that right? Where did Mickey Mouse get in then? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't got a beard. Well, he's a perfect he's not mouse. a perfect human being, though, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Better than some. <laughs> Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Right. For, for two points. The answer is that all of them except Imogen Stubbs uh, are known to hate beards and moustaches. Imogen Stubbs said she had to have her moustache waxed off along with uh, every other hair on her body in preparation for a film containing a sex scene. She's quoted as saying, whatever happened to the days when sex was Celia Johnson and <laughs> Jack Maninoff on the piano? <laughs> well, uh, there's a bit of gossip I wasn't aware of. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Ian. Stella Rimington, head of MI5. How do you know? <laughs> we believe so. Peter Imbutt, uh, former head of the Met. Uh, John Selwyn Gummer, head of Nothing. And uh, Tory MP Richard Needham. I would guess this is uh, a security question. Mm -hmm. Stella Rimington, she's had a problem with security leaks. She's meant to be head of MI5 and everyone knows where she lives. Islington, isn't it? Yeah, do you want to give the street? <laughs> Richard Needham, he was an MP in Northern Ireland and he had his phone bugged oh. and uh, he was recorded in his car saying on a phone that he thought Mrs Thatcher was a cow. <laughs> <laughs> but the first sensible thing a Tory minister had said for years <laughs> got him into a lot of trouble. Um, John Selwyngum is the old one out. Why? Because he mm. is. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and incredibly you're right. <laughs> But the answer is all of them have been involved in uh, major security gaffes, uh, except John Gummer, uh, whose only lapse with uh, regard to security was to put £17,000 worth of home alteration expenses through on his security bill. The government explained why it footed the bill, saying it was compulsory for the taxpayer to pay for his protection. Just as well if it was voluntary, I doubt the donations would have stretched to a padlock. <laughs> uh, and Sir Peter Imbert was the principal speaker at an anti-terrorist conference where a passing technician happened to notice a giant bomb taped to the lectern just before Imbert was due to go on. The hall had already been thoroughly checked and the security firm in charge, I'll give you a clue, it starts with the <laughs> group and it ends with the word four. <laughs> which uh, unguarded remarks denote a welcome end to this round and the very real problem uh, concerns Paul and Baz who have 11 uh, for the simple reason that Ian and Caroline have 12. And so we slip into our galoshes and uh, prepare to wade into our final missing words round. Those who lag hopelessly commence proceedings so uh, Paul and Baz Cop and I follow this lot. Ovation as the Queen's savages what? Communism. <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> Cor corgis. Um, com uh, corgis is funnier, but communism is actually right, so well done. Uh, next. Games up. Douglas Herd's up. 
Yes. <laughs> Time's up. Time's up is. is the right answer. Very good. Next, 12 million Britons show signs of what? Mental fatigue. <laughs> Dementia. Mm, Dementia's not far off. Mental signs illness. Signs of having watched riders. Mental illness. <laughs> uh, Mental illness. Yes, yep, yeah. having watched riders. Uh, yep. <laughs> Mental illness, and lastly, man who dressed chair admits what? Nothing. I wasted my time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. Um... Is it mafia connections? Uh, I'll give you one for that. Links to the mob is actually the answer we were looking for. So, uh, very good. <laughs> Ian and, uh... There's no way is that mafia connections. No, 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 no. Uh, what mob just... was this then? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Lavender Hill Bastards. mob. Uh, <laughs> um, Ian and Caroline. Here's your nutty cluster. What issued to lawyers? Cyanide capsules. <laughs> Is it That's... inflatable Lord Helsham dolls? <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost that, but not quite. Uh, it's more no win, no fee rules, but you're almost there. Uh, next, Branson is a model for what? Penthouse. Airfix. <laughs> is it two generations? two generations? British Garden Gnome Industry. Uh, I'm going to give it to two generations. Young and old is uh, depressingly the answer. Next, Princess endorses what? Marriage Guidance Council. Uh, food. Cooper's Creosote. <laughs> <laughs> Chiropractor's help is what I was after. <laughs> uh, that we weren't going to get. And finally, Dinosaur Settles what? Uh, family argument. In Essex? <laughs> Stomach. Um, <laughs> feel a bit dicky, have a dinosaur. <laughs> I'll give one to Caroline for argument. Divorce row is actually the uh, right answer. Uh, which wayward estimates bring us uh, lurching to the end of tonight's unsavoury scrap. And the painful truth is that this week's Plain Janes are Ian and Caroline with 16, and this week's Pretty Pollies are Paul and Baz with 17. <laughs> So, a pat on the back to our winners, a rodent down the trousers for our losers. Uh, but before we let them slither homewards, it's our beholden duty to complete our caption competition. Ian and Caroline, yours look like this. Yeah, I think the little girl's saying, Look, a pig. <laughs> Pig in a jumper. I thought she was saying, Why is that man advertising soap? <laughs> Couldn't they get Angus Deaton? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Paul and Baz, what do you think of for this? Um, new mobile phone only works if you're six inches from the person to speak to. <laughs> uh, I thought it was the one on the left saying, Hello, is that dialer twit? <laughs> is it a uh, John Major reports faulty mirror? <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, on which surreal note, we say thank you to our guests, uh, Ian Hislop and Caroline Quentin, Paul Merton and Baz Bamigboy. And I leave you with news of complaints that the That's Life team may have been going too far in encouraging the public to join in their stunts. <laughs> At the Newbury by-election, there are suggestions that some voters are too ashamed to publicly admit voting Conservative. <laughs> and finally, Prince Charles gives new meaning to the phrase, the dog's bollocks. <laughs> Good night.